med school is difficult in any part of the world but knowing a few things can make it much more easier and much more effective and that's what we're going to be discussing today Hey there lovely person watching YouTube if you're new here hi my name is Ajay I'm an Indian doctor currently in the UK if you're already subscribed welcome back I love you to the stars and back so a question i get asked quite often by junior med students and medical aspirants is that how should i study in med school and also how can i manage everything in med school or will i be able to manage everything in med school and these are important questions because medicine <laughs> is a long course and knowing how to do it right makes it more easy and like i said more effective as well so if i have to study medicine all over again it's kind of going to be easy because now i've figured out what works what doesn't what is important what is not what i should be focusing on and all that good jazz so let's get into it you should aim to attend as many good lectures as you can and i'm stressing the word good because i know some of the lectures can be really really terrible and you should know which ones are terrible and you should probably avoid that but 80% of the classes are decent and you would have learned at least something after attending these and you should not miss these classes because attending a lecture and then studying about it is much more effective than just self study so understanding a concept from a textbook is all about the story that you make while reading the textbook but when you listen to a lecture and then study you would already have an idea of storyline in your mind and when you study you can just go on adding you know bits and pieces to this already existing storyline and this makes it so easier for your brain to interlink concepts and when you you know go back and study after listening to a class it's kind of like a revision so it just makes studying much more easier now i do know that you know listening to lectures and then studying uh, seems like a lot of work intuitively that's how we are going to think but in actuality this combo saves so much time because like i just explained this saves so much time during your self study sessions now that's all good if you have good teachers and the class are engaging but what should you do if your class are boring and useless simple just watch a lecture about that topic before you start studying on your own there are many online resources for this there are many free videos on youtube dr najib has really good uh, lectures ken hub is great for anatomy but my favorite resource for whole of medicine is maro maro is my favorite place to watch lectures because it comes integrated with uh, questions and flash cards and these are scientifically and even by personal experience the best ways to learn medicine because this has lectures then the questions and uh, pearls includes active recall and space repetition as well maro in its current form wasn't available when i joined med school and later on in third and fourth year when a lot of my friends were using i didn't really use it because i just thought maro was for neat pg preparation and because i had no plans of doing uh, residency in india i didn't really use it in med school but boy was i wrong like during internship when my friends were using i just started using it and i realize it's an amazing source to actually learn medicine and if i had to study medicine all over again i would uh, you know either listen to classes in med school if they're good or if they're not i'll come home and watch uh, videos on maro maybe make my own cornell notes or maybe just annotate uh, maro notes and then on the same day i would uh, solve as many mcqs as i can to get active recall into it and later on when i'm revising i would either do the questions again and read the explanations or i would just do the pearls and i would do this in a spaced manner so i get space repetition so on the whole this combo <laughs> works really well if you want to solidify concepts from med school but i probably won't start this way from first year because maro is a bit more focused towards neat pg so even the first year subjects they sort of assume that you know the subjects because this is more for third year final year Uh, interns post intern students to prepare for the neat pg but i think right from second year if you start uh, using maro it's an amazing platform like i said this combo works really well this is what i personally use but for first year subjects especially for anatomy i would use a service like kenhub which is like an online learning tool for anatomy maybe i can discuss that in another video but on the whole what i mean is watch lectures study do questions and get space repetition so have this combo of studying and it makes studying much more effective and actually much more fun and easier in the long term and also at this point i have to mention that uh, maro is a company that has a very special place in my heart because my first job right after med school was as an editor at maro 
So I know the company really well. I know everyone there. I know the people who made the app, the founders. I know the ethos of the company. It's just a company that I really love. Now, a great thing about medical training is that very early in our training, we actually get to go to a hospital and see real patients. Obviously, we won't be treating anyone, but we'll be taking history, we'll be examining people, and we'll be coming up with our own funny diagnosis based on the limited uh, knowledge of medicine that we have, and also a bit of inspiration from HouseMD. But all of these are very, very important for your medical career. Being able to take a really good history, being able to examine a patient very effectively and efficiently are much, 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 much more important than having 20 gold medals. The art of history taking and the art of examining a patient can be learned only by practicing there's really no other way to do it. So you really have to spend a lot of time practicing these things. In the hospital, present the case to your seniors or professors as often as you can. And I cannot stress this enough. It's very natural to shy away from presenting the case and really not many people would be interested to present the case unless they are, you know, made to present the case. But be that guy or girl who's ready to present any day, any time. You will make mistakes, you will look like an idiot sometimes, and your classmates might laugh at you now, but they won't be laughing at you when you're a really good doctor with really solid foundation. And being able to present a case in a composed manner, which comes only by practice, is the best way to build your confidence as a med student and later on as a doctor. And when you present, practice presenting without looking at the notes that you have made. You should go back to the notes only if you forget something. Please, please practice presenting the case without looking at the notes. Firstly, because that's how you have to do it in the exam. So it's a uh, good practice anyway. And second, it makes you think. And when you think about a certain thing quite often, your brain solidifies that information. And that's always a good thing, isn't it? And if something exciting is happening in the hospital, stay back and observe that. Once when I was in surgery posting, I think this was in third year, there was a very interesting case of gastric carcinoma being operated. Out of seven of us, four of them uh, left the OT right after the clinical class duration was over and they went back to college to attend theory classes. But, uh, you know, three of us, we stayed back and we watched the entire surgery and the professors were so happy that we were so interested. So not only did we watch something really cool, uh, the professors thought we were really interested in surgery. So they were quite interested in teaching us all the cool and interesting stuff in surgery. And we kind of got into their good books as well, which is always a good thing to do. So studying theory is important, but clinical medicine is what you'll be doing your whole life as a doctor. So be in the hospital and get a really solid foundation. You'll thank me later. Now, as we can all agree, in any country, medicine is quite a long course. So if you want to make it more enjoyable or, you know, bearable, you need to have the right set of friends. Of course, we can't choose who we like being friends with. Your best friend might be a terrible student, but you really enjoy spending time with him or her. And that's great. That is also really important. But you should also have friends who share a similar goal as you do. It becomes much, much easier to study and achieve your goals when you have friends you can discuss with and friends who keep you motivated. And it's also good to have a bit of healthy competition between friends to see who has completed more topics or who's scoring more in exams. As long as you keep it healthy, it can motivate you to study harder and try to be better than your friends. But of course, this can also go the other way and cause unnecessary anxiety and jealousy. But you need to keep it healthy and balanced, just like all things in life should be. Another mistake that a lot of med students do is that they don't try to make friends from senior and junior batches. And that's because in medicine, at least in India, the whole concept of uh, seniority is very big. So you call your seniors, sir and ma'am, and respect them, at least on the outside. Just the same way you respect your teachers and your juniors do the same thing to you. So there's this solid uh, sort of hierarchy among med students and this continues later into clinical practice as well. So when there is such a hierarchy and then there are so many barriers, it's natural to not feel like wanting to have friends from other batches. For a lot of people, this is really true. But if you ignore this barrier and go and talk to people and try to be friends with them, med school becomes so much more easier. In fact, at one point, I had more friends from my senior batches than I had from my own batch. And all of these seniors were very helpful. They'd give me book recommendations, they'll tell me tricks and lessons that they've learned. 
just like I'm telling you guys, they'd introduce me to other seniors and residents and that's how I got into Youth Red Cross. So a lot of fun stuff happens when you open up you go and talk and make friends with uh, people from all ages. And knowing lots of people will always be very helpful. For example, I'm in the UK right now. Once I get my license to practice here, I have to start applying for jobs. And because I have a few of my seniors already working in the UK, the whole process becomes a bit easier for me. I can get any guidance I want. I can ask them about the exams. I can ask them about registration. I can ask them, you know, to put in a good word about me to their consultant if I'm applying for a job there. Of course, you don't become friends with someone just for the benefits, but you should genuinely build friendships with a lot of people and you'll never know when they'll be of a massive help to you. And again, this is a two-way street. You can't just have them help you. You have to help them if they need that. You can't just randomly ask a senior for help if you have just spoken to this guy or girl like once, six years ago. So it kind of takes effort but networking is really important and it's really worth it. So do more networking, all batches, your batch, senior batch, junior batch, residents, professors, be friends with everyone and try to be in everyone's good books. This will help you in one way or the other. I get a lot of people asking me questions like, I play basketball or football or cricket or whatever. Will I get time for all of this in med school? The answer is yes, you will and you should really make good use of that time. Extracurriculars are a very important part of education, no matter what level you are at. It lets you meet more people, relieve stress, build a spirit of sportsmanship. You learn how to tackle challenges, you learn how to manage a team, you learn how to be a team player, and all of these qualities are really, really important for being a doctor. It's very easy to say, Oh, medicine is such a tough course. Let me keep all of my extracurriculars aside and just focus on studying. But really, how much you study has no correlation to what kind of a doctor you're going to become. Theoretical knowledge is not as important as you'd think. Of course, at least in India, you have to clear stupid exams with a lot of marks to get the residency or the specialty that you want. You have a great rank. Nice, you have so many options to choose from. Do you have a rank? Uh, too bad, you only have a few options. But let's just say you study a lot and you score really good marks in these exams and you become a radiologist. But if you don't have the qualities that you need to be a good doctor, which you build not just from studying, but very much through you know extracurricular activities and stuff, you'll just end up being a radiologist who no one gives a about. So I'd rather be the best biochemist rather than being a dermatologist or a radiologist and also thinking that you can just focus on studying for five to six years is how you end up being a frustrated person and nobody really likes a frustrated doctor even if you have 25 gold medals your patients don't care you're a bad doctor so find a good balance and develop some street smarts and some jugad and all of these things will take you a long way as a doctor. So just to revise, first thing, attend or watch as many good lectures as you can. Second, spend as much time as you can in the hospital. Third, make good friends. And fourth, socialize with other batches. And fifth, and the most important thing is don't make your life all about studying. Make sure you have fun as well. So thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful. Quite a long rambly video. So leave a emoji down in the comments if you watch till here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Stay happy. Bye-bye.